morning. Welcome to Bethel this morning as we gather around God's grace, love, and forgiveness in Jesus Christ on this sixth Sunday of Easter, also celebrating Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to the mothers and grandmothers and mother figures uh, here in the house, so to speak, and uh, online. And uh, that is a little bit of our theme today and uh, picking up on those themes from the scripture readings that are appointed for today. Uh, but we'll take a look at how God urges us uh, to follow him and how he uses mothers uh, to uh, urge us to follow him also. Our order of service is the catechism service uh, using words from Luther's small catechism. And we begin with our opening hymn for all the faithful women. The third or second stanza rather mentions Eunice and Lois. That was uh, Timothy, uh, the one that Paul wrote to, Timothy's uh, mother and grandmother uh, who encouraged Timothy in the faith leading on to Timothy following Paul and being uh, a pastor. So we give thanks for Eunice and Lois and uh, all the faithful women. God's blessings. Please stand to sing. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These words remind us of our baptism. What is baptism? Baptism is not just plain water, but it is the water included in God's command and combined with God's Word. What benefits does baptism give? It works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promises of God declare. 
What does God's word in Romans 6 teach us about baptism? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. confession and absolution. Confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins, and second, that we receive absolution, that is forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. Confess and admit your sins to God the Father. I have lived as if God did not matter, and as if I mattered most. My Lord's name I have not honored as I should. My worship and prayers have faltered. I have not let his love have its way with me, and so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt, and those whom I failed to help. My thoughts and desires have been soiled with sin. I pray you, almighty God, merciful Father, for the sake of the innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Do you believe that the word of Christ's forgiveness I speak to you is from the Lord himself? I do. Receive the forgiveness Christ won for you by his passion, death, and resurrection. By the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I have called and ordained servant of the word, forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. with you and also with you let us pray O God the giver of all that is good by your holy inspiration grant that we may think those things that are right and by your merciful guiding accomplish them through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen let us pray together Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. In your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things, let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus. 
history of the early church comes from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 48. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partility, but in every nation, everyone who fears and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word he sent, that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, in, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him appear, not to, not to all the people, but to us who, who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate, drank, and with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to, to be judge, the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of, the Je of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle readings comes from 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 through 8. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, and we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of the God, this, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water, only by, by the water and blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. We join in the song of praise. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus said to his disciples, 
as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. mother holding the infant. Maybe maybe the infant's just a few hours old. And the mother says sweetly, and I was thinking about doing a mother voice, but I won't do that. Anyways, the mother says sweetly to the infant, clean your room, take out the trash, do the dishes, get good grades. And then I will love you. That, of course, is backwards, right? (laughs) I mean, to to tell an infant, you know, I'll love you once you get around to doing everything I tell you to do. That's backwards. That's not how a mom's love works, right? The mom loves the child, and as the child grows up, will teach the child and have expectations of the child, but it begins with love. We can see that, right? I mean, that you can't expect an infant to do all those things, but the mother can love the infant. We know this would be backwards to expect all those things from an infant, to expect the infant to earn mom's love. We know that's backwards. 
but somehow we can so easily go backwards with God and end up, no matter how many times we tell ourselves it's the opposite, we end up still thinking, I need to do good things and then God loves me. Right? As much as we emphasize that it's all about God's grace, it's all about a gift from Him, it is, starts with His love, as much as we emphasize this, come on, you, you're with me, right? You still catch yourself sometimes saying, gosh, I just have not done enough for God. God probably doesn't love me today. Am I the only one who ever still struggles with that? Apparently in this room I am. But um, I struggle with that. It's just, it still sneaks in, like do good things, and then God loves me. So when Jesus talks about loving God and obeying his commandments in our passage from John 15, when he talks about loving God and obeying God's commandments, it's easy for us to get it all topsy-turvy. So again, picture the mother and the infant, and keep that picture in mind. As we hear John uh, describe what Jesus is saying, John 15, it's, it actually is part of an extended section of teaching in the Gospel of John. Jesus teaching his disciples. It's after the Lord's Supper. It's after Jesus has washed their feet. And it's before they go out to the garden where he will be betrayed. This is his final time with them, his final time to, uh, to teach them, to pray for them. And remember, this, it helps us to know the scene when we remember that this is a mother's urging, insistent love. It's teaching flowing out of love for the child. And that's what we have with Jesus. Jesus is teaching them with this insistence about uh, following God's commandments, but it's a teaching flowing out of his love for them. First John chapter 5, the epistle reading today, it, it echoes uh, what John heard that night, right? It's no, it's no surprise John, the disciple, was with Jesus that night he wrote those things down in the gospel, and then also in a letter, he writes a very similar paragraph about God's love and commandments. He's reflecting that same thing. John 15, or sorry, 1 John, wait, I'm confused now, right, sorry, John 15, verse 9, abide in my love, Jesus says. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love love. Let me read that again. You can have it open if you want. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. And we think, see, if we keep his commandments, that's how we're loved by God. We get it immediately topsy-turvy. We immediately hear it and we flip it all around. But back up a second. What does it mean to abide, to remain? What's it mean to abide, to remain? So if I say right now to you, remain seated, how much energy did you just use? None? None. Because you're already seated, right? If I say remain seated, you don't have to do anything. You're already there. Remain. Abide in your chairs, <laughs> right? Um, do you have to do anything to prove it to me that you have remained seated? No. I mean, you might make a little joke of like, oh, okay. You know, like sit up a little bit. Oh, okay. You know. But you actually don't have to. You're proving it to me because you're already doing it, right? So remain seated. So remain, abide, it's passive, it means don't leave. And that's what God is talking about here, or what Jesus is talking about. Abide in God's love, remain passive. You're already there, stay there. But the next thought then comes is, 
how do I know if I'm abiding in God's love? You abiding in your chairs, it's pretty clear. But how do you know if you're abiding, you're remaining in God's love? How do you, how do you know that you're not leaving God's love? Well, Jesus says, if you keep my commandments. It's kind of an answer to the question, abide in my love. And we say, well, how, am I, how do I know I'm abiding in your love? And Jesus says, keep my commandments. Obeying is a sign of remaining with God, of sticking with Jesus. That's what we've got here. Maybe it's a little bit easier if we unpack a phrase, okay? So we, so we started with the topsy-turvy, right? The mother commanding the infant to obey and then she'll love him. And we started with the idea of, well, sometimes we do that with God, too. We figure God's only going to love us if we obey. And now as we start thinking about abide in my love and keep the commandments, maybe we need to unpack that a little bit. And a phrase like keep my commandments... A way to think about that is to cherish and hold fast to God's revealed instruction for life. In other words, to cherish what he cherishes, to cherish what he teaches, what he instructs, how he designed things, cherish what he cherishes. And that starts to sound a little different. Abide in my love and cherish what I cherish. That's starting to sound a little different than just obey, right? We have trouble with that. Abide in my love and cherish what I cherish. Or in the case of 1 John chapter 5, we know we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. Again, 1 John, it can sound a lot like obey and then God loves you. But if we unpack it, how do we know if we love our fellow believers in Christ? The answer is when we love God and we live for the sake of his instruction. We embrace his teaching, embrace his instruction. So you can almost say, abide in his love and abide in his instructions. Remain in his cherishing of you and cherish what he cherishes. The mom and child. Remain, the child remains in her love. And the child grows up to cherish what she cherishes. The child continues to remain, to abide, not run away from the mother's love. And to cherish what the mother cherishes. And here I mean to cherish what the mother values, right? Although, you know, if you recognize that mom cherishes reading the New York Times on Sunday and having a cup of coffee, then definitely celebrate that. But to cherish what she cherishes means to cherish what she values, what she has taught you, how she has led you. Christian mothers urge their children to love God and cherish what God teaches, what God instructs, what God values. Let me say that again. Christian mothers urge their children to love God, to remain in God's love, and to cherish what God cherishes. And when Christian mothers do that, they're standing in for God. They're voicing what God urges. Abide in God's love and remain in his way of life. God uses moms, grandmothers, foster moms, mother figures, all to Christian mothers to urge children to follow what he urges. And the mom and infant picture helps us, helps all of us to hear that urging in the right order. Mom loves infant and will teach the infant her way of life. God loves you and teaches you his way of life. So let's pause for a second now and reflect on, his, on what it means to abide in his love and how that takes specific shape in our way of living. 
So start with abide in his love. What, what's that look like, right? I mean, we know that Jesus has said, you know, you will see it because you're following him. But what's it mean to abide in his love? How do you start there? Well, to abide in his love means to remain, to sit back, to rest, to be cradled in his love. To be cradled, to rest, to remain in knowing that he created you. He created you to live in his created world. He showed you mercy knowing that you would be a sinner, but he did not want to destroy you. He sent his son to live and die and rise again to bring you forgiveness, life, and salvation. Remain in this. He sent his Holy Spirit to lead you, to help you rest in God. To, uh, you were baptized. Rest in your baptism, the work God did. You can rest in the Lord's Supper, the gifts that God gives you, the work he does. Rest in the absolution, Jesus announcing the forgiveness of your sins. Rest, abide, remain in knowing that he has invited you to pray, and he hears your prayers. So stay in all of that. And when you stay in all of that, one specific way this takes shape is where Jesus immediately goes in John chapter 15. After teaching them to abide in my love and keep my commandments, the next thing he teaches is, love one another as I have loved you. Abiding in God's love and cherishing his instruction doesn't just stay in some sort of disconnected spiritual moment with God. Jesus immediately applies this to our daily lives. Love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as friends. He says, I have called you friends, and I lay down my life for my friends. Love one another as friends. Cherish what God cherishes. Cherish God's children. Those who have been called to faith is what he's really specifically talking about here. And here, since Jesus is talking to the disciples... I think it's okay to say we're not just talking about loving our family and our friends. I think specifically here, Jesus is urging us to love our fellow brothers and sisters in the church. And the whole Christian church, yes, but also specifically the Christians you gather with locally. Love one another. John's letter, that too, is addressed to a congregation, and he is urging them with the urging of Jesus, love one another. So let's bring it together. Abiding in Christ's love means living in the congregation for the sake of God's instruction, embracing God's teaching by loving one another and serving one another, seeking one another as friends in Christ being in each other's lives. And that's the only way you can fulfill this. It's really hard to follow Jesus, to abide in his love and keep his commandment like love one another. It's really hard to do that if we're never paying attention to one another. It's really hard to love one another if you never pay attention to one another. Would you agree? Right? I could go with a really scary image like the mother sets down the infant and walks away. That's a very scary image, right? Jesus is saying, abide in my love, abide in each other's lives. Love one another. Encourage one another with Scripture as disciples. Build relationships with each other. Intentionally have spiritual conversations with one another. Pray with each other. We serve those around us who are in need, first in the congregation, and then we look and we say, well, why don't we go serve the community together? But it begins with loving one another here, promising to one another that we ensure that this gathering abides in Christ's love and is able to meet together for worship and Bible study and, and serving the community. We do all this because we abide in God's love 
and we cherish what he cherishes. Loving one another so that we say, let's go serve the community because we want others to know the love of God and the love that we have for one another. So Jesus gets very specific right away. Abide in God's love. Cherish what I cherish. Go cherish your brothers and sisters in Christ because you know I love them too. We abide in Christ's love when we cherish his way of life. And he gave us this in a way to live together, to encourage one another, and encourage the world around us. May God strengthen us in abiding. Uh, maybe that sounds strange. May God strengthen you in abiding. I just said that you didn't need energy to stay in your seats, right? You ever need a seatbelt, though? Maybe a seatbelt that God puts, you on, uh, puts on you, right? Stay in his love. So God, strengthen that. Keep me there. Help us to cherish what you cherish. And help us to see that those around us, it's the first place we can see what God cherishes. Amen. Pause here to say how uh, encouraged I am that uh, you know, we sent out yesterday the message about Chris Jones, uh, you know, son of the congregation, son of JJ and Janet Jones, and his health needs. Uh, if you didn't see this, he is a uh, long haul trucker, uh, found himself delivering in Philadelphia, and had to go to the emergency room where they did emergency surgery to remove a stomach tumor. Uh, he's recovering there. They've been able to get his wife, Maria, out there. But he has a long road ahead, not to make a pun on his job, but a long road ahead. And we put that word out yesterday, and it's really encouraging to see how you care and love for one another. Uh, already have raised uh, almost $13,000 to help uh, them, and there's, there's going to be a lot more after that. And uh, just so I'm encouraged by that. I mean, it's a, it's a specific way uh, of seeing what we just talked about. Abide in God's love, cherish what he cherishes, and cherish your brothers and sisters in Christ. So thanks, God, for that. Uh, we continue with our confession of faith, the second article of the Apostles' Creed and Luther's explanation. Please stand. Confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart, that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, 
born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. continue in prayer. The Lord invites us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven. What does this mean? With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true Father and that we are his true children, so that with all boldness and confidence, we may ask him as dear children, ask their dear Father. Therefore, we bring our prayers to you this day, Father. We give you thanks for your love. May we remain, abide in your love. By your Holy Spirit, help us to rest in you. Rather than thinking we need to um, act uh, to earn anything from you or act to save ourselves. Instead, help us to sit back, remain in your love, and from that place be able to cherish what you cherish, to follow what you have commanded, to cherish those around us, to love one another in the congregation and brothers and sisters in Christ. May you help draw us continually together to strengthen one another, to call one another into faith, to um, to rejoice together in being your creation, being your redeemed people, being your people who await for you to come again to take us to eternity. Father, on this Mother's Day, we give you thanks for, for mothers and grandmothers and foster moms and uh, mother figures, uh, women in our lives who have mothered us. We give you thanks especially for Christian mothers and the ways in which you have shaped them by them abiding in your love and following your commandments, urging their children and grandchildren and the children around them, urging them to follow you. We pray that you would be with mothers who are um, learning how to do that each day and uh, lead and guide them by your Holy Spirit. Be with mothers who are estranged from their children. And give them comfort and peace this day. Also, children who are estranged from their mothers, give them a, a peace and a comfort this day. We pray that you would be with those in their foster care system and those awaiting adoption, that you would provide uh, mothers, parents for them. And we thank you, Lord, that uh, above all else, we know that you are the one who has said, you know, bring all the children to you, for we are precious in your sight. Father, we ask that you would be, continue to be at work in India as the COVID-19 crisis there uh, continues to be devastating. We pray that uh, you would provide for treatments and hospitals and vaccines uh, there and protect uh, uh, people in India, especially uh, Victor and Javina's family, and pray that uh, you'll be uh, with them. We also ask that you would be with that uh, help and that need that is around the world, the protections that are needed in so many places. And we pray that you would find ways to bring about uh, a way to provide that for all people. We ask that you would be with the people of Af Afghanistan as there is unrest and uncertainty in this transition time of the United States leaving. We pray that you would be with them, especially those who are mourning after the bombing in Kabul, killing many children this week. We pray that uh, your word of gospel could 
be a light in the midst of that darkness. We ask that you'd be with our district partners and continue their work. Northern Illinois District, Concordia University of Chicago, Wall Camp, and Lutheran Church Charities. We give you thanks for our seminaries, and we especially continue to ask that you'd be with Jacob Stoltzman as he graduates soon and is preparing for his first uh, to serve at uh, Emmanuel in Aurora. As a congregation, help us to continue to see what it means to be disciples, to have heart lives, daily lives for Jesus. We ask that you'd be with our loved ones who serve in the armed forces around the world and at home, and we pray that you would protect them. Be with Marshall King, David Murnick, Allison Luswick, Bradley Abbott, Stephen Furman, Andrew Walla, Jonathan Grana, Justin Coster, Andrew Lohman, Mario Colon, and Lance Knoll. And today we ask that you'd be with many on our health list, ask that you would be at work and bring healing. We especially ask that you'd be with Chris Jones, and uh, we pray that you'd do a mighty work in his body and give him new strength and relief from pain today. Watch over him and provide for him and Maria and the family. We ask that you'd be with Sharon Mata, Ardell Mata, Bill Astrike, Tim Moran, Jerry Payne, Mayor Westendorf, Ginny Bell, and Bev Burdick, and Donald Dorban and Randy Ketlinski. In grief, we ask that you'd be with Scott Gutsky and his family as they mourn for his uncle Jerry. Also be with Linda Moran's sister as she mourns the loss of her husband. In these uh, families, we pray that you would speak loud and clear with the comfort of your word. Be with Akiba Melanson and her family. Continue to give them strength. Be with Kathy Young and her family. Give uh, them peace and healing and guidance. We also pray for um, uh, someone's uh, extended family members who are uh, going through a divorce. We pray that uh, you would bring about um, uh, some kind of uh, resolution there, if there can be reconciliation, and if not, we pray that uh, uh, there would be a beginning of healing in the midst of that. And finally, Lord, we give you thanks uh, for Emma Bartman, who will on Tuesday turn 95. We thank you for Emma's life, for all the blessings you have given to her, the ways that she blesses others, and most importantly, for calling her to faith in you. Continue to watch over Emma and keep her in your care. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have prayed as the Lord has taught us, we have said, but deliver us from evil. What does this mean? We pray that our Father in heaven would rescue us from every evil of body and soul, possessions and reputation. And finally, when our last hour comes, give us a blessed end and graciously take us to be with him for eternity. The church concludes the prayer saying, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What does this mean? This means that I should be certain that these requests are pleasing to our Father in heaven and are heard by him. For he himself has commanded us to pray in this way and has promised to hear us. Amen means yes, yes, it shall be so. Yes, it shall be so, that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
be seated. A few announcements uh, today. Uh, first of all, since I've been emphasizing it today about loving, encouraging one another, if you are ever thinking of someone and you're thinking, oh yeah, I see them at church, or oh, I haven't seen them for a while, or something like that, but you're like, but I have no idea how to connect with that person, I'm going to give you a, just one phone number that will help you connect with anybody in the church that you want. 847-244-9647. It's a magic phone number that will connect you to anybody. Well, okay, it's a couple of steps, actually. You call the church office. We will help you get connected with other people. So never let it be an excuse like, well, I don't know how to call them. I've heard that excuse. Don't do that. Just call us. Find out. We'll get you in touch. All right. Um, Sign-ups continue to go out for every week, uh, so watch for that. Uh, we've got a couple of more weeks of our full, robust, professional uh, live stream, uh, but then beginning May 30th, with, we're not exactly sure how this is going to look, but it's going to be scaled back uh, as we go into the summer. Um, a couple other notes there as we head into the summer. May 30th, we're still making plans, but May 30th will be Karen Light's uh, last Sunday playing organ as they prepare to move to Texas this summer. So we're planning a little bit of a celebration on May 30th. More details to come. Speaking of celebrations, I was also talking to Jake Stoltzman. He has asked that his ordination happen here at Bethel, which is awesome. So ordination is where uh, you know the, the district president President, the pastors lay hands uh, on the candidate uh, and you know ordain him as pastor. Later, he'll get installed in Aurora, but we're looking at mid-July uh, for that celebration. A couple other announcements. Uh, this Tuesday will be the last Zoom prayer time that I lead. We've got a couple of people thinking about leading it going forward. If you're interested in helping make sure the Zoom prayer times continue, please let me know. May 18th uh, is How to Fight Racism. That class be, or study begins on May 18th, Tuesday nights. So great to have uh, my wife Susan and Janet Jones and um, uh, April Ann Lynch Bulk and Nicole Todd ready to lead that as we talk about through Christ what does it mean to uh, uh, fight against racism. Uh, the Sunday School event, uh, one day kind of a wrap up event, is next Saturday. And uh, those of you here, but also out there, uh, we've got some extra cool plants. Uh, not, well, they're cool plants from the cool plant sale. Uh, cool is our partner serving the community, especially through transitional housing and the food pantry. Uh, great success yesterday with the plant sale, but there's some extra plants. Uh, if you'd like to uh, purchase one, they're down the hall by the office. Or if you want to come later or this week, there may be a few left. So thanks to everybody who helped with that. With that, God's blessings. I look forward to greeting all of you out there somehow, some way. Connect with me, and I'm going to greet the rest of these folks as they go. Thanks. God's blessings. Mm -hmm.